Oh man, I am so excited to be putting this video together and sharing with you everything I can about how to grow potatoes. And so when we look right here, I just harvested these out of the bed right behind me and all of these potatoes, 1.7 kilograms or about four pounds worth of potatoes came from only three seed potatoes. And the reason why I'm so excited about this and putting this video together for you is because there have been other instances where I've planted three potatoes and gotten an absolutely measly crop from it. Just absolutely terrible. And so what I'm gonna walk through today are all of the different learnings that I've accrued over the past several years to ensure that you're getting absolutely incredible crops of potatoes this upcoming season. And so the very first step for growing amazing potatoes is to use seed potatoes. And you can pick up these seed potatoes at any garden center or any nursery. And the key difference between these seed potatoes and what you would find at a grocery store is that seed potatoes are meant to be used for growing more potatoes versus at a grocery store, some of those potatoes could be covered or sprayed with a sprout inhibitor to make them more shelf stable and last for a longer time. And so we want ultimately sprouts to be coming out of it because that's how the plant is going to begin to grow. So using seed potatoes is going to ensure that you've got potatoes that are all set and primed to put on a whole bunch of growth. Now, speaking of the sprouting side, the second key step is to let your potatoes sprout before planting them. And in order to do this, all that you need to do is about three weeks before you plant them, move your seed potatoes into an environment that's dark, but room temperature. And what we're hoping to have happen here is for the eyes on the potatoes to begin to sprout and that first little bit of green growth coming out of the plant. And this is gonna accomplish two things for us. First, it's going to ensure that every potato that we are putting into the ground, we know that it's already sprouted, it's all set and ready to go to be growing into a potato plant. And then the second piece is just that it accelerates the growing process a little bit. So now rather than it having to do all of its sprouting in the ground, it's about two to three weeks ahead of schedule has already put on that growth. Now, with that being said, step three, it's one of the most important ones, one of the biggest lessons that I have learned with potatoes, and that is to be patient. And so potatoes are really, really hardy. We can start them super early on in the season. However, they have a determined number of growing days. So after about a hundred growing days, they're going to have flowered and the plant is going to begin to just simply die off. And so what that means is that if you plant them super early on in the season, then those hundred days are going to be indexed against fairly cool, non-sunny days. But if you're patient and you wait to plant them until the days are getting a little bit warmer and longer, a great number of them are going to be in more favorable conditions and that's going to allow the potato plant to not just grow above the surface but really put on all kinds of new potato tubers for you to be enjoying and this has been without a doubt one of the biggest learnings for me when it comes to potatoes and what separated my really miserable crops from my great crops all of my great crops have come from when I've planted those potatoes basically at the very end of May or around June 1st. And so what I'm going to do moving forward is I'm gonna plant about a third of my crop on May 1st, and then the next third I'm gonna plant on June 1st, and then that final third I'm gonna be planting on July 1st. And that's going to give me three rounds of harvesting through the season and all three sets of potatoes indexed against really good hot long days, which the potatoes absolutely love. So moving on to step four, as those potatoes are sprouting inside and you're being patient, that's the perfect opportunity to prep your soil. And so my favorite soil blend to be growing in for potatoes is 75% compost and 25% vermiculite. And so compost has tons and tons of nutrients in it for the potatoes to grow nice and big, but then the vermiculite, it helps with the water retention side so that those potatoes are going to have lots and lots of not just nutrients, but now also water and moisture around them to be putting on tons of growth. And the beauty of this soil blend is that it works so well for so many different crops. It has been hands down the best performing soil that I have in my garden. And I've been doing side-by-side -side soil experiments comparing different ones. So if you're looking for just a great all round soil to go with, 75% compost, 25% vermiculite, and you're gonna have beautiful, beautiful crops. Now tip number five is all around planting our potatoes because that's kind of one of the key moments when it comes to potatoes. So just before we dive into all the goodies that I have for that one, if you are not subscribed to our channel here, I really encourage you to do so. We've got more than 150 different videos on our channel here with all kinds of tips, tricks, 
techniques and experiments to take as much of the guesswork out of gardening as possible so that you can just be having amazing crops and most importantly, feeling how great it is to be in the garden. So now for step number five, this is all around planting your potatoes. And the first tip on this front is to plant your potatoes nice and deep. So regardless of whether you're using a raised bed or a container or in ground, you want to dig down at least six to eight inches for planting your potatoes. And the reason why this is so important is because these potatoes here that we just harvested, they are only going to grow off of the portion of the stem that is buried beneath the surface. So if you planted your potato only two inches deep, then you've got less than two inches of space for new tubers to be growing off of that plant. But if you plant it say eight inches deep, now you've got closer to eight inches of underground stem growth on that potato plant for new tubers to be coming off of, which is why we end up seeing way more potatoes than if we were to plant really, really shallow there. Now, once you've dug that hole just before you put the sprouted potato in there, what you next want to do is utilize our transplant kit to get even more nutrients and microbes into that planting area. So all that you need to do is sprinkle one handful of worm castings into that hole and then add one tablespoon of our 444 superfood and then just gently massage that into the hole that you're planting into. And once that's done, then grab one of the sprouted potatoes that you have and place it into the hole with one of the sprouted eyes facing up. So it knows exactly which direction to be growing. And once you've got that potato in there, all that you need to do is backfill it with the six to eight inches that we just moved to the side to ensure that it is planted nice and deep so that we can get all kinds of tubers coming off of that stem. Now to wrap up on the planting side, the last thing that I do is that I do give it a nice big drink of water. And the reason why I personally do this is because that water is what kickstarts the growing process. And so now that we've finished step number five, we've really done the majority of the work when it comes to growing potatoes. You know, a lot of that work is just in getting them all prepped and planted. And then once they're planted, it's a really, really low maintenance plant, which is part of the absolute beauty of them. And so there are still though a couple of things that we want to do to get as many potatoes harvested as possible. So step six is to hill up your potatoes. So in the three weeks after you've planted your potatoes, they're going to sprout through the surface. And once this has happened, you can cover the entirety of that plant with another two, three, or four inches of soil. And if the plant's a little bit mature, you can just cover the main stem underneath while leaving some of that foliage up above. Either technique is totally all good. All that we're looking to do here is cover as much of that stem as possible so that once again, we have as much potential for new tubers to be growing off of the plant beneath the surface. And that brings us to our final two steps for today here. So step number seven is watering. And this is going to vary for each and every one of us, but potatoes, they do love a lot of water. And so the kind of rule of thumb to go off of is around the base of the plant, dig down about two inches. And once you've dug down, if you're noticing that it is still really dark and moist to the touch, then there's still enough moisture in there and you don't need to do your next round of watering. However, if as you dig down, it's now looking lighter brown and when you touch it, it's basically dry or almost dry to the touch, then that's the sign that it's time to give it its next watering. And so you're going to go ahead and give it a nice and big drink of water on that day. And then once you finish watering, just double check the soil in a new area, two inches deep to make sure that it is now moist at that level. And if it isn't, just give it another round of watering, check again and continue to do so until that soil two inches deep is really nice and moist. And so as you do that watering, you're of course going to notice the plant putting on all kinds of beautiful foliage growth. And just trust that if you've done those first seven steps here, that your potatoes are doing everything that they need to be doing beneath the surface, which brings us to our final step for today. And step eight is harvesting and really when to go about harvesting. And so when we look at the potato plants that I'm harvesting right now, they're essentially 100% dead. And so the sequence that you're going to go through on this front is that the plant is going to put on its foliage growth. And the next key sign that you're looking for is it going to flower. Once the plant has gone to flower, that's when we're starting to get into the sweet spot and getting ready to harvest. Now, once the flowering is complete, that's when you could start to harvest. But again, these potatoes, they can stay beneath the surface for a really long time. And so for myself personally, I'm just going to let that plant grow as much as possible and put as much energy down into those potatoes beneath the surface as possible. And then once that plant has died back, 
nothing else is happening beneath the surface. So at that point, it's when I go about harvesting. But folks, if you follow those eight steps for planting potatoes here, I know that you're gonna have an absolutely amazing crop this upcoming season. I really hope this video has been valuable in some way, shape or form to you, maybe gotten a couple of learnings from it. And if you do have any questions, just leave those down in the comments section. Other than that, folks, can't wait to catch you in the next video. Go get those hands dirty. I'll see you soon.